Welcome back to the first team. I'm Joe DeLeon, and joining me as always, my good friend and NFL draft analyst, Ryan Roberts. Today, we're going to be sharing our edge rankings for the 2024 NFL draft. We do not have as exciting of a group as we've had over the past couple of drafts, but we still have some very talented and explosive pass rushers that are going to be highly sought after in this year's NFL draft. Ryan, I feel like there is a range of possibilities with these edge prospects where we could see one come off the board as early as that eighth pick with the Falcons, or we could go even further down and somebody could not come off the board until those late teens. There just seems to be such a large disparity in what could happen because of the value of this position group in this year's draft. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that there's that window in Atlanta at eight, and then it, what's it? The Saints have what the 14th pick, I believe, if I remember correctly, right? So, like, I, yes, I think that we yes. envision, I think we envision the first edge coming off somewhere between eight and 14. I would say this regardless, though, Joe, if, if the first edge comes off at eight or they come off as late at 14 to the New Orleans Saints, I still think there's three that go in the top 20. I don't know if you agree with that, but like, I feel like there's three edges that go in the top 20. Yeah. And then after that, it's a little hard to predict if if there's going to be any or how many are drafted in the late stages of the first round because I feel like we're going to get a little bit of a run on edges in the second rounds kind of feels like to me and then kind of going into the day like the rest of day two, but it definitely is a little bit of a. I think it's I think this I think this class is more about depth than it is about quality up top. Like we have a couple guys that I really like at the top, but I think for, for overall. We have three guys I would say are for sure first round picks. And you have like a couple more after that that are like borderline. And every single year we get a lot of demand at the edge position. I just don't know if this is a first round demanding edge class, if that makes sense. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts. Yeah, I think that there is a really strong likelihood once we get into the second round that we could see a ton of guys come off the board because there's a lot of role scheme specific guys rather than the top three that we're going to end up revealing uh, that I think are a little bit more capable of playing in, in different situations and scenarios. Right. Let's not waste any time though, Ryan. Let's jump. Well, right well before that, Joe, before that, before, yes. that, before we jump in, can I just put one disclaimer out there? Just one disclaimer, if I can. Oh please. no, oh no. What is it? There's there's three guys that I haven't finished emails on, so I just want people to understand that before we unveil the list. So I haven't gotten okay. to Marshawn Neelands out of Western Michigan. Have not gotten to Marshawn Neeland. Just putting the yeah. names out there. These are guys that are or have been talked about in in the media circles, right? Jalit Hunt, who's your boy from uh, oh, your trash from Houston Baptist. Haven't seen him yet. And Jonah Ellis from Utah, I've seen, but I haven't done a deep dive on, so I'm not. So he will not be included in this list either. Just, just some, so people know that that this will, this isn't a finalized list. This is just our updated list heading into April. Obviously, coming close here. Yeah, the, I don't think we're going to be missing too much without you having watched or finalized watching those guys. Neeland, don't get the buzz. I, I don't really understand why Daniel Jeremiah strong, had him right? ranked so high. He's a strong yeah, kid. He's, he's got a good length. I just no, no, very uncontrolled. I think is the is yeah. the best way to put him as one would expect for a guy who stuck at Western Michigan. Here's my ten through six, Ryan. Number ten, Adiza Isaac from Penn State. Number nine, Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian. Number eight, Chop Robinson from Penn State. Number seven, Austin Booker from Kansas, and number six, Darius Robinson from Missouri. Well, I think the, the conversation starts here, Joe, and then we'll work our way backwards. I thought I was going to be alone ranking Darius Robinson as an edge because it feels like people have kind of, after the combine, have moved to defense, interior defensive line, which I thought I I, so I, I'm, I, I'm giving you a kudos here because I remember watching the 2022 film of Darius Robinson inside more exclusively, and I hated it. <laughs> I just did not think he was very good inside. Edge in 2023 on the outside playing as like a five tech, kind of a butt kicking five tech. 
I thought he did really well in that role at Missouri. So we'll get to him on my list because I was actually a much bigger fan of his 2023 film than I thought he was going to be. But I just kudos to you for ranking him as an edge because I think some people are kind of overthinking that after run 495 or whatever the heck he did at the combine. Like obviously not a good for a traditional edge, but he's 285 pounds. We're not talking about a traditional edge here. You know what I mean? And I also think that this is why body typing and talking about body typing is so important because like Brandon Dorless, I had graded as a defensive tackle because if just look at his physical profile and the way that he plays, this is somebody who is going to be more successful if utilized as a defensive tackle. Darius Robinson is mm -hmm. built like a defensive end. I, I got to see him in person yeah. at the at the Super Bowl for Radio Row. The guy's a defensive end. Is he going to translate into being like a super productive pass rusher? Probably not, but he is right. built with the profile to be a five tech like you're talking about. And I think that he could play a defensive end in a 4-3 scheme. I don't see why he couldn't do that. He just won't ever really become one of those players that is a 12-plus sack guy in the NFL. He's just going to be like a really good secondary rusher, I think, in any defense that he ends up in. Yeah, I mean, I, I think of him as this. Like, if 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 you're a 4-3 team, I think he's a 4-3 base end, strong side defensive end that can reduce down in obvious passing situations, right? You can play on some on the inside against when you're third and longs and you know that it's a passing down. But then for a 3-4 team, I mean, doesn't he, he screens Pittsburgh Steeler to me. Like, this could yeah. be the type mm -hmm. of guy, like the Marvin Leal and, like, one of those dudes who college defensive end that reduces down to a, you know, a 4 I four like that type of guy in an odd man front. And I think that he could do a lot of things there. I, I want to ask the – well, I don't know. No, no, we can, we can have a conversation now because we're going to have it slightly in my list as well. But you had Chop Robinson above Adisa Isaac. I we'll love your your thoughts on the two Penn State pass rushers. Yeah, so I, I really like Adiza Isaac. I don't think yep. that he necessarily has that extra gear that Chop Robinson did. I, I am, and, the, and I think that naturally the general perspective on the edge class, it, it would be perceived that I'm low on Chop Robinson. I think I'm just realistic about him. I There is not a world where this can be a three-down edge rusher. There's just not. This is a situational pass rusher who – is extremely explosive. Like he is very, very quick, zero to 60. We saw him run a really good 40 time. He is somebody who on third downs, I want him to pin his ears back and just go. And I think that he's got a crazy spin move. He can do all these very, very rare things that we can't really find for edge rushers. But the problem is, is he doesn't have that the strength. He doesn't have the physical profile to consistently play against the run. He got his butt kicked yep. and I'm really worried that once he gets to the NFL, he's going to have a lot of troubles with doing it. So his placement is for him to go somewhere in the third round and for him to be specifically drafted as a situational pass rusher, not as a full-time defensive right. end. Yep. I, I would worry about some people that are going to try to convince yourself that you can just pack on a little bit more weight and then he's going to be better against the run. I, I just don't think that's going to be in the cards for Chop. I think he, I mean, he came in with the combine at like 253. I think that's about mm -hmm. what you're going to get out of him because he is a – I mean, he's got some short arms, man. He does not have a great wingspan. Like, I just don't know where you're going to pack it on his frame to make him a guy that's going to be ever plus against the run. Like, you just want him to be passable at times. Like, that's all you're looking for because, obviously, he does the ex have the the explosiveness and the first step, you know, just to be a, a guy that can be a designated pass rusher on the next level. And my, my top 10? My yeah, go ahead. 10 through 6? Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, all right. go. Go because Chop Chop is going to be here. A little disclaimer. Okay. So number ten, I had Cedric Johnson from Ole Miss at number ten. Number nine, I had Chop Robinson from Penn State, who we just had the conversation about. Number eight, I had Chris Braswell out of Alabama. Oh. Number seven, I had Austin Booker from Kansas, and number six, I had Adisa Isaac from Penn State. Did you say Darius Robinson? I did not say so Darius he's... Robinson. Uh, okay, so he's going to be in your. Uh, quick thoughts on Cedric Johnson. That that's the only yes. one that kind of stands out to me because I didn't bring him up. Yeah. So Cedric Johnson is he's kind of the he's kind of that guy that's pretty solid to good at everything, but doesn't have an elite trait. Like that's what Cedric Johnson is, right? Like he's six two and some change. He's got decent length for his size. The thirty three plus inch arms, right around an eighty inch wingspan. He's about two hundred sixty something pounds. Nothing physically about him really just pops. But he has a good level of explosive off the line of scrimmage, good lower body flexibility. He can bend the track at times. Power profile is solid, proficient, you know. But like, I don't ever see Cedric Johnson becoming a 
high volume sack artist, right? Like I think that he is a guy that if he does hit his peak, he is a quality starter that can give you six to seven, maybe even eight sacks a season. Like he's just a quality player at worst. I think he's a really sound rotational defensive end that can fit into either scheme because he's got enough flexibility, enough athleticism to play in either a four man front or a three man front. Just think he's good, man. He's a good player. Nothing flashy. Cedric Johnson will be part of a rotation at least in 2025, if not during the 2024 season. All right, I'm going to hit us up here with my number five to start us off. Um, I'm surprised by the range of difference that you and I have on Chris Braswell, who is my number five guy. Listed at six foot three, two fifty five. This is a guy who was formerly a very highly recruited edge prospect, but didn't necessarily put it all together and then also had a bit of limited playing time because of a bunch of guys that were ahead of him, Dallas Turner, Will Anderson. Right. This was probably one of his first years of like really getting a premier role as a pass rusher uh, for this Alabama defense. He, to me, has all of the traits that I'm looking for, the frame, the length. Uh, when he really makes a like a tremendous play on the field, you start to see those flashes of a guy, if he p- puts it all together, could be a quality starting defensive end. Kind of similar sure. to what I was talking about with Darius Robinson. I don't think that this is somebody who is going to eventually become a premier pass rusher in the NFL, but a very good secondary option, kind of like he was in 2023 for Alabama. The biggest caveat and my biggest qualm with him, I just think he's constantly lacking a plan. He's la- he's not fully developed in terms of his technique and his hand usage. And if we can find right. a way to improve and more well-round those things, he could be a really valuable early second round pick depending on who takes him so so i said cedric johnson on my list was number 10 and i said chris braswell was number eight right i think that chris braswell is the plus version of what i just described as cedric johnson i think he's pretty good at everything i don't think he's great at anything though like i don't know i didn't see i didn't see i didn't see great flexibility from chris braswell i saw pretty heavy hands as a pass rusher i saw power and i saw good initial acceleration out of his stance like I think that he's a just a good overall athlete and physical profile that being Chris Braswell but I don't know Joe like I I just I because I think we agree in this sense that I think Chris Braswell has an opportunity because I have a late second round grade on Chris Braswell I think that Chris Braswell could develop into a quality starting defensive end but I don't necessarily see high upside with him I just I I think he's a very good player, you know, a guy that's going to be potentially a number two in a rotate, a uh, number two defensive end to a, you know, a Robin to, to someone's Batman. Like, I think that that's, he's that type of player, good football player. I'm not sure if I see any elite traits that give me the vision that he's going to become something stellar. I just think he's going to be a good player on the next level. I, I mean, that's part of the reason why. Well, this is why. And like Darius Robinson, you, you just been you just you're that big. Recruiting I think there's similar. There, you're that big recruiting guy. No, you're the no. big recruiting guy. Five star. He's got to have no. upside. I get it, man. I think it's that a, there's Antonio Alfano on this not, list. Not, not, Alfano oh, shut this. up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whirlwind last week that we had to deal yes. with. Uh, that we got pulled into somehow. Um, I, I think it's similar to Darius Robinson, and not in any type of usage or physical profile, but just in the sense where. Both could be projected to go in the first round, early second, and just be really good starters, but maybe not elite ones. Who's your number five guy? Number five, perfect segue, Darius Robinson. Number five for me, Edge, Missouri, 6'5 plus, 285 pounds. Like I said, he had played inside on an exclusive basis in 2022. Looked uncomfortable, would still flash because he's got really good short area explosiveness, and he's got length for days, obviously. But I thought he was a lot more comfortable on the edge in 2023. Not going to be the full bend the track type of dude, not a pure outside track rusher, but he's a guy that has length that can play outside of his frame. He's got explosiveness. He has inside counters to be able to work inside on pass rush downs. I think that he can work against guards and sub as well. This is a player that I think still has a lot of untapped potential because he's one of those guys, Joe, that I think he's going to play outside but then he is, I think he, the biggest weapon that you're going to be able, you're going to be able to weaponize him as an inside rusher at times, right? Working against guards, working against center. I think that length and that explosiveness is going to be a huge asset to a defense because I just think it's going to be a lot for interior offensive linemen to handle. So give me him as a movable chess piece. He's an edge by trade, but he's a versatile move piece as a rush weapon. All for my defensive line. 
Uh, my number four, because I've already talked about Darius Robinson, shared my thoughts. Yes. My number four is somebody who was a little surprised at the weight that they showed up at the Combine because – his best ability was the fact that he was built like a bowling ball. And I'm talking about Braylon Trice, who played at six foot four, two seventy five. And I think he showed up at the combine closer to two forty was the weight that he was. Two forty five. Two forty five. Which is yeah. bothered me. And I think it was so that he could test a little bit better. But if he plays a little closer to 260, I think that that's his perfect mm -hmm. ideal weight. This is somebody I would take in the back end of the first round. He has that boxer's mentality in the way that he plays, which I always get obsessed with. I've seen yep. some people have this discourse, and I think I think Corey was uh, Corey Kinnon, who friend of the show, uh, was one of the yep. people who brought this up on Twitter. Where it's not very replicable for guys to win with power in college to translate to the NFL. It doesn't usually typically work. But I think that Braylon yep. Trice activates and uses his power in less of a, I'm just going to run through your chest type of a way. I think his just hands mm -hmm. are just so aggressive. They're so tactile. This is a guy who I think has uh, the ready to go, the ready to go capability. If he lands in a defense that is just looking for an additional piece, I think the best landing spot that would really excite the hell out of me is if he ended up with the Baltimore Ravens at the end of the first round who yep. just parted ways with Tyus Bowser and are going to be looking for this next prototype of really good hands, maybe not the most rangy, bendy guy, but still just really high motor, really, really good technique and could be uh, impactful as a rookie. That he, yeah, you're not wrong. He, he definitely fits the Baltimore Ravens style of outside pass rusher. You think of what they've been able to do over the years with guys like Zadaria Smith and Preston Smith and then Matthew Judon. Like it, it's definitely I, mean, I think all the way back to Terrell team. Suggs too. Like Terrell Suggs yeah. was a really good power rusher. Like that. It just makes me think of guys like that. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I think that Corey's illustration of power rusher is correct if there's no plan, right? Like if you're a guy that's yes. just barreling down. But I think that I believe that Braylon Trice does have a plan. He understands hand usage. He has good reactionary quickness to work inside counters and to work secondary rushes. I think that he has just kind of an easy profile. I will say this, Joe. I don't know if you agree with this. So 2022, he was 255 pounds right around, played it around then. And then he was 270 range as a, in 2023. I thought he was better at 255 than he was at 270. 270 was a little bit heavy for him. Yeah, to a, little, so a little too big. 245 is too small, though. It's too small. He needs to be between, in my opinion, 255 to 260. You're good to go. You're ready made power rusher, a guy that has that reactionary quickness and has those good hands. So I think that he ha is ready made to per play in the NFL today, 2024. He can come in and he can be in a rotational role by year two. I think that he is a high producer on the other side of a, a really good pass rusher. Like I think he's a really good secondary rusher. Potentially I would draft him in late second round. I mean, sorry, in the late first round, early second round is where I would take Braylon Trice, which is why I have him at number four as well ah. so we uh, see him we see him very similarly man i think that he was he's been overthought a little bit because hey let's be honest if he would have showed up to the combine in the 260 something range compared to the 245 probably wouldn't have tested that well i mean let's be honest like he is not a dynamic athlete he's a powerful technician which there is a place for the nfl he's not going to get drafted in the top 15 to 20 because of that fact but he can come in and play for you and be a very valuable member of a pass rush unit because I think he has all those traits that we talked about already. Yeah, Br Brandon Trice um, overlooked because we're yeah. spending too much time talking about <sighs> J.J. McCarthy. All right, number three for me, and I, I, I don't think you're going to have this guy at number three. I My guess is he's number two for you. I think we have the same number one. Okay. My number three, though, is Dallas Turner from Alabama. Okay. Dallas Turner has the highest ceiling out of any of the draft prospects of these edge guys that we're talking about today. The bend mm -hmm. is tremendous. The mm -hmm. burst is tremendous. He yep. is the prototype that we look for in when we're building a pass rusher. When we're building a defensive end, a stand-up outside linebacker, he can play in a 4-3, three, 3-4. Three, he is going to run the outside track. He can run past guys. He can um, out-bend guys. All of those physical traits to me are fantastic for Dallas Turner. Now, why we're not maybe necessarily and why I'm not talking about him as somebody who could go in the top five, despite him checking all those boxes. I feel like his production was a little bit inflated. 
because there are times where offensive tackles have a misstep, make a mistake, and he just runs past them, and that leads him to getting a tackles for a loss, tack- uh, him getting a sack. There's also a lot of times on film where he really doesn't have a plan. Like he really doesn't use his hands very often. He improved a ton. The previous year, and we talked about this over the summer, he would run a guys with like would just run his full no like hands. chest forward at guys, which was <laughs> insane. The most insane thing that I've ever seen. He's showing signs of improvement, which is why I acknowledge this is somebody I'll gladly take in the middle of the first round and then kind of let him come along after a year or two and then realize his potential and be a super productive pass rusher. But I have him at number three behind two other guys because of just the risk that comes with a player who's not as far developed. You are on your game today, Joe, because you were correct. He is number two on my list. So you are very correct. Okay, I know you too well. I hey, Look, man, we talked about this a lot. But there is one thing I've learned over the years. It's that you always value outside track ability, explosiveness, and just that that those athletic gifts that are just very rare, right? And Dallas Turner has that. Like for all the flaws he has as a player, because he still has a lot of flaws. Let's be very honest about this, right? While I think that he has high upside, there is a world where he's Vic Beasley. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. There is that world because his hands are non-existent. It's not that they suck. I just don't see him very often. Like he just doesn't yeah. use his hands. He is a kid that is going with first step quickness and acceleration around the track, which cool. That wins at the next level. I'm good with that, but it's not going to be as easy as it was in college. And there is going to be an urge that you are going to have to use your hands at the next level more consistently and just more thoroughly. Like you're just going to have to, if you rush the way you did at Alabama consistently, you are going to be a flash in the pan, occasional flash, but not an every down player. That's what that's the threat of Dallas Turner, which is why I have a middle of the first round grade on Dallas Turner. I like him as an athlete and his upside, but he would be a guy that I would worry about drafting in the top 15. I would just be terrified, to be honest with you. I would be terrified oh. about it. I would still do it potentially, depending on what team I'm at, and I would still be okay with the team taking that gamble, but it is a gamble. Let's be honest. There is a little bit of boomer bust to Dallas Turner. There is a little bit of volatility to Dallas Turner. Like he could be the best edge in this class by a decent margin, or he could be a guy that is Vic Beasley. There, there's a there's a wide chasm between how good he can be and what his floor is at. Like ultimately, as, as on the NFL level, I will take the jump on traits. I will take the gamble on traits, but I would not feel. Great going to sleep at night all the time because he is a gamble, no matter how you want to paint it. It's kind of ironic that the Falcons are the team that are currently being rumored to be very interested in taking him. If that is the case, and I think Vic Beasley is a very accurate he's, comp for... He's a he's a better prospect than Vic Beasley, but the things that made Vic a boomer bust prospect are also there with Alice Turner that can make him a boomer bust well, prospect. To, to be fair, though, Vic Beasley was really productive for a period of time. Like, he, he was unbelievably good. Well, he had and that I one did, year where he had, like, what, yeah. like, 16 sacks or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, I, a wild I could year. totally see Dallas Turner going somewhere, even if it's Atlanta. His second year explodes, and then falls off like that is the type of prospect that he is that I just would love to see how he develops and then there's an attention to detail in focusing on his developing a guy that I'm not worried about developing too much though is my number two because I think this is probably the most close to their ceiling and their ceiling is tremendously high that being Lee Tulatu now the injury stuff uh, complicates things Yes, I, I, we're, we don't have the medical reports on him, so there's a really good chance that something strange happens on draft day. But as of right now, it seems like the NFL really likes Lee Etulatu, especially you see a lot of tweets from uh, Senior Bowl director Jim Nagy talking about him a lot. His pass rush coach was sharing some clips of him at his pro day talking about how he's up from 265 in the 270 range, which is nuts. 270? Because- I yeah, didn't see that. what's wild. the name of his his coach that you you and I um talk about all the time? Oh, man, I know you're talking about the yeah, one out in California, well, right? Yeah, well, while, while I finish talking about him, quick yeah. quickly look it up. But he yep. is Coach Ed. Coach Ed. Who's Coach Ed? Coach Ed's Ed. last name is I, I forget Ed's last name. He but he's, he he's, has though uh, yep. like the perfect frame for the way that he plays the position. He is not nearly as bendy as as some of these other guys that we're talking about in this top five. 
but his technique, his physicality, and his motor is the best in the class. And this might be one of the most polished edge rushers that's come out in the past five years, maybe even 10 yeah. years. Like he is in that category because he is so tactile. He's so savvy in knowing this is what I need to do in this situation. You'll find instances where he'll get beat by a tackle, but he counters and still finds a way to result in some sort of a pressure. Those are guys that are hard to come by. This is a, a type of a guy that plays as if he's been in the NFL for three years. I really think that yep. Latu has the highest likelihood of any of these edge rushers to step right in and have a very early impact. I like the thought of him with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, maybe. Um, you, I remember, put a put him with the Miami Dolphins who have had inconsistencies yep. with health at edge. And then I also would package him in as a Ravens guy that feels like a Baltimore Ravens pass rusher. But uh, number two for me, and I, I just I have always been a big fan of Latu since the since the summer. Yep, and shout out to Coach Ed. It's Eddie McGilvra, and he is at DL Coach Ed on Twitter. That is DL Coach Ed on Twitter. Got to throw him a shout out, Joe, since I just completely forgot his last name on live air. So Ed Eddie McGilvra is the guy, and he works with a lot of the great pass rushers out of the state of California specifically, but a lot of guys both NFL and college alike, go to cha- train with Coach Ed. And I, yeah, I guess it's a great segue because you were also correct. Latu Latu is number three for me. He is. Mm-hmm. He is about as sure a bet as anybody in this class if health is good to go. And I've heard a little bit of mixed reviews on what the medicals came back on, so I don't want to put anything out in the universe that's not 100% correct. So we'll see what the final verdict is on there. But... Nothing about this kid physically really pops. I mean, he just has a requisite across the board of just solid to good, right? But he is a technician. His rush plan is fantastic. He has he is one of those minds that you can tell he really studies film and he understands what an offensive tackle's is weak offensive tackle's weaknesses are, what their go-tos are, and he understands how to exploit it. So this kid is a ready-made pass rusher because he understands his rush plan. He understands his 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 strengths he understands his limitations as well which is big for a guy to be very proactive versus versus re- reactionary i think that this kid has a deep understanding of how to rush the quarterback and if health lasts out i think the leo Tulatu will be a very good pass rusher on the nfl if nothing else all right that ends us off with our number one guy jared verse from florida state six or sean Nealons, western shut Michigan. up oh, don't even okay. don't even yeah. don't even joke about that i have a top 250 grade on him uh six foot four 260 pounds I think that Jared Verse is the most well bundled up prospect in this class of if we took what was great about what was great about Leitu Latu and what's great about Dallas Turner and we combine them. If we put them <laughs> together, I think that that's what Jared Verse is because he's got some pretty good technique. It's not the best, but he's got some pretty good hand usage. Yeah. He has tremendous power. And he's also got pretty good bend. You know, he's not limited in his, you know, his physical profile for what he's going to be able to do. This is a very athletic defensive end prospect who tested very well at the NFL Combine. I think what puts him in the special category is the power that he's able to generate in short areas. The ability mm-hmm. to win in the short areas is really important for edge rushers. So the way that he can barrel through a guy's chest the way that he can when he needs to, maybe if that initial move doesn't work, there's a bunch of times on tape you see him knock like really knock over some offensive tackles. Now, I think he does need maybe a little bit more work on fully building out his uh, his hand technique, but he's got the hand yeah. speed. He's got the power in his hands that is going to eventually make him uh, a very aggressive and impactful pass rusher. Best things about Jared Verse, who's also number one on my list, explosiveness and power. Those things are outstanding. I mean, first and mm-hmm. foremost – he is a hair under six foot four, 254 pounds with 33 and a half inch arms, 80 inch wingspan. Everything is requisite there. Testing numbers, Joe, I think illustrate exactly the best parts of, of Jared Verse. Four, five, eight in the 40, one, six flat, 10 yard split, 35 inch vert, and a 10, seven, 10, seven broad is a really good number. That's explosiveness, guys. He gets out of the blocks fast. First step explosiveness. He can really threaten the outside track just with his pure speed and get off there. But then power, despite having 33 and a half inch charms, he did 31 reps on the bench as well. You see, I remember it was his first game, Joe, for Florida State 2022 against LSU. 
And I know both those LSU tackles were young, right? Like it was Emory Jones and Will Campbell, and we'll be talking about them in the summer. Like they're very good off the tackle prospects potentially. But boy, he mm. absolutely obliterated LSU that day. And I feel like his production was sporadic over the last two years. But in the biggest games, the best teams on his schedule, specifically down the stretch this year, like the last three games of the year, he was it was child's play. Absolute child's play. He absolutely dismantled some dudes. I thought like the ACC championship game against Louisville, like it was wild what he would did against Louisville, who was a 10 win team this year in the yeah. ACC, right? So give me the power profile, the explosiveness, the speed. This kid has it all. Not the bendiest guy in the, of all time, but he can threaten outside with his foot speed. And then he has incredible power to be able to work those inside counters, inside moves. He is going to be, I don't even want to classify him as a steal, but like, he is going to be a menace in yep. the NFL. And maybe he's not the first edge taken, but he is going to be an absolute menace if he's wherever yes. he ends up getting taken. That's going to wrap us up at Joe DeLeon at Rising Draft. Folks, thank you for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Drop us a comment below. And then also leave us a five-star review wherever you're tuning in on podcast form. We'll be back later on in the week with more. Enjoy the rest of your week.